for joining me this morning. In the message we started about three weeks ago, the Christian goat and my sheep. The Christian goat and my sheep. We took our text to the book of Matthew, chapter number 25, from verse number 22. And we also went to the book of John, chapter 10, from verse number 27. And we looked at who are the goats? Who are the sheep? We talked about the fact that in every kingdom, in every society, there are who? Who are favorably disposed to obeying the abiding ones that if you want them in today's world. We also talk about the people who are not favorably disposed to instructions. Those are the ones that you will call the lawless people or the stubborn ones in the society of today. We moved from there to look at 10 things that the goats don't know. Those that are stubborn. The 10 things that is, they, they, they don't know. We started that last week. We said God is not mugged. We said he never jokes even with in small matters. We look at many things like that until we get to number 10. Now, brethren, today we are looking at my sheep. We have looked at those things that makes somebody a goat. Let us now look at my sheep. There is the sheep, or there are the sheep, and there is also my sheep. Jesus owns his own sheep. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Now we are looking at the book of John, chapter number 10, from verse number 1. Tell your neighbor, say, pay attention. For those who may not be, maybe probably you were not around in the last two, three weeks, you can get the tape or the video from the media stand, or you can visit our website, www.covenantrevisitministries.com. You can download the videos from there. It will bless your life. The book of John, chapter number 10, we are reading from verse number 11. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. The good shepherd is so committed that he is ready to lay down his life for his sheep. Verse 12 says, But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd. Who, whose own the sheep are not. See the wolf come and leave the sheep and flee it. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. Just here is describing his quality as a shepherd. So that the sheep will know that if Jesus is actually your shepherd, if you actually a sheep belonging to Jesus, he will lay his life for you. He is ready to do anything therefore for you. He is able, he's ready to move mountains because of you if you will be his sheep. It's like the hireling. The hireling, verse 13, the hireling fleeth. Because he is an hireling, he has no stake in the sheep. He has nothing to lose other than that day's pay. If anything happens to the sheep, the hireling fleeth because he is an hireling. He careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. And know my sheep and am known of mine. Brethren, may I tell you this morning, be sheep. 
know him so that he will too of one leg in no doubt it's already over we are in dangerous times in dangerous times we are in dangerous times you must belong to him your survival depends on it your succeeding depends on it your very life depends on it your peace your well-being depends on it you must belong to the good shepherd i try to stay out of trouble i try to do good it doesn't hold anything now the world the world the way in is already in tumor there is no country on earth today the promises they made during campaign they don't want people to say they cannot measure up but there it is everybody's eyes nobody thought a time like this will come in the world but it has come is to belong to the good shepherd i am the good shepherd i know my sheep and i know my sheep let's continue as the father knoweth me if so know i the father and lay down my life for the sheep. we are going to verse let's continue see i know the father the father knows the father trust down my them If somebody says he will lay down his life for you he will move mountains ready to pay price for you that is the kind of god we are talking about my brother the kind of god we are talking about we need his sheep In jesus name verse 16 not a sheep i have which are not of this fold them also i must be, and they shall do what they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one. therefore doth my father love me because i am ready to move mountains found everything including giving my life because i laid down my life that i might take it again No man take it from me but I lay it down of myself I was not compelled I did it because I love my if you have any more why run let us get a the price for us as without that shepherd you will fall prey to ravenous animals I pray it will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus I'm back in it no man take it from me but i lay it down of myself i have the power to lay it down and i have the power to take it again this commandment have i received of my father just things that he has said you know these are heavy words Some people will believe it some people will not but i implore you my brother my sister because therein lies your life devil god why hear ye him they were convincing themselves to move away from jesus all these things he's saying then others in verse 21 others said these are not the words of him that had a devil so they listened to him they saw substance in what he said i pray you will find substance in this message this morning in the mighty name of jesus i pray you will find it directly for you and not for us in the mighty name This is the description. 
this was how see this man is mad this man no man he mad he no he now he asked him come come tell us the truth if you are the christ let us know now i told you and he believed not my brother the message comes to you every time sister you hear this same message all the time will you believe him today that is your life you need him the lord will bless us in jesus name jesus answered them i told you and you believe no they bear witness me see look at the works i do am i of his sheep but you believe not because he may not know himself as my sheep but he is my sheep he may call himself a goat but he is my sheep but he is my sheep he may be loving him destroying him but he did not call on him but i know him he is my sheep you must recognize the voice of your master this sheep has no mistake makes no mistake at hearing the lord will bless us in jesus name the next one he hears the master how clearly you know you can hear him and you can also hear him clearly somebody is far away he hears my voice say oh, that is busoe speaking but he did not get the message you don't get what i'm saying so the message is not clear to him you can hear jesus is talking to me but you didn't know what he's exactly saying let me give you an example there was a time we were in rio boat then a family the wife gave birth to a set of twins and they called me and they said man of god the lord has done it my wife gave birth ah, i was so happy where is the hospital they started describing the place to me there was no name as i wanted to go out of the gates i had to sit down <laughs> ah. one of our sisters was with me that day i came back inside i sat down i said the lord is talking to me say he wants to tell me something i waited i waited they called me again i jumped up I, as i was getting towards the gate i had to sit down <laughs> i sat down again the sister was baffled see what kind of a man of god is this you are hearing jesus wants to talk to you he didn't see anything sir i had that voice sit down three times i was expecting the lord wanted to tell me something but i didn't know eventually i ran to the place out of joy when i got there it was not an hospital it was an ogunge place all manner of this and that hung everywhere there was no name on the way i asked what is the name of that hospital pastor just come is beside this in front of that be at the hind of ah. when i got there ah I said which place is this for god's sake and i carried the babies i blessed them and i left on our way myself and that sister we started saying why did these people come to this kind of a place to come and deliver in the morning of that day the following day sir the obonga mama that operates the shrine took the first child you don't forget that i had called the covenant of our god on those children 
as he used the leg of the first child to match the open offer, I don't know the meaning in English. The definition board that one died instantly. He returned that one to the mother. Took the second one. As they called me, the pastor, come oh, this one, this one has happened. She took the second baby, put the one's leg also on that thing. That one died instantly too. They called me back and said, Pastor, can you two has died? I said, what happened? They now told me that as the woman put their leg on that thing, they died. The grandma and that mama were there together doing the same thing. They belonged to the same cult. They could not reason that what killed the first one will also kill the second one and not put the ones, the other one's leg on that top of her. That was when it dawned on me that God was telling me, sit down. Meaning, sit down. Somebody, you will hear him clearly. To God be the glory about Ten months later, they gave birth to another one. But look at that loss. It will not be your portion in Jesus' name. You can hear somebody's voice muffled. You will not get the message. But this master is telling you, hear my voice clearly. From that time, if he says, sit down, no call. Hey, man of God, calm down. I will never answer. When I see that your problem is too much, I leave the phone, I won't pick it again. Because in telling me sit down, I know he meant sit down. And you see, as a simple soldier, when the last order is sit down, the continuing order is also sit down. Until a new order comes to say stand up, you remain seated. Father, the grace to hear you clearly. Father, give it to me today in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody pray. Give me the grace, O oh Lord, to hear you clearly. To be attuned to your spirit. All of the time. Father, give it to me in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. The next thing that happens to you. That sheep identifies his own instruction. That sheep, unlike pastor at that time when I ran to that place, that sheep is spiritually matured. It's a long time ago. I'm telling you about 10 years or so now. That experience was so bitter to me. Be matured spiritually. Identify the message. Revelations will come. Every revelation is good. All there is no bad dream. See, ah, I had a dream. I saw somebody cut me up. He shot me a gun. It's a very terrible dream. Sir, so long as you come back to life, the Bible says secret things belong to God. But whatever he has released, he has given us, is for us and our children. Revelation is for you and your children. You can decide to allow it to happen. You can decide this thing will not stand. Because it belongs to you. Revelation. You see that a warning. 
all revelations. Is that a warning? A promise? Or an instruction? Just three things. That is what all revelations are. Including that bad dream. You want to go on a journey? You saw yourself returning from that journey in rags. What God is telling you is don't go. Don't go. You saw yourself involved in an accident. What God is telling you, don't go. It's an instruction for you or a warning. You will identify your own instruction. In the mighty name of Jesus. The next thing, my brother, sister, that my sheep that Jesus talks about. He says, I know my sheep and my sheep know me. So this sheep must know his master. He must know him personally. The master must know you personally. You will receive visitations from that master. We're talking about intimate relationship here. Very intimate relationship. Where the master decides which boxer you should wear. Which pants you should wear. You say, ah, pastor. That is too much. If he did not tell you wear the blue pant, you wear anyone you like. But if he tells you wear blue, wear blue. Because he gives you the freedom to decide. But the day he comes to say, we are the blue boxers. Wear it. He has a reason for it. See, nobody will see it now. May it not get to the point where somebody will see it outside in Jesus' name. Huh? You cannot say amen. amen. <laughs> huh? Sir, some people have gone to kidnappers then. That it is because of the color they wear. That say, no, 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 don't allow this one to come in. Don't you know that our God forbid this color? Let him go. If he had won the green instead of the white that day, he would have gone with them. You must have that intimate relationship with the master. Very, very important. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Let's move on. This sheep, to qualify as my sheep, he never struggles with obedience. He never struggles with obedience. He obeys willingly. He obeys willingly. Brethren, your answer is inside your obedience. Your miracle is inside your obedience. A pastor Mrs. told us this story. Somebody gave her a car. She said she wanted to go to that program that day in another church. And this, the Holy Spirit told her to put on white. So she wore a white gown. And she went. When she got there, somebody was looking for her, a stranger. He said, yes, it is you, ma. He said, me? He said, yes. He said, the Lord said, that car is yours. Uh-uh. He said, that car? He said, yes. He said, he told me that the person whose color, whose clothes match the car, that person is the owner. And the car is white. I saw it with my eyes. I'm not saying you must put on white to get white car. She was late. So that somebody will not come back. Come and become seller. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I saw the car. And she needed the car. Seriously. When you pray. Many people don't know. God also speaks. You speak to him in prayer. 
He speaks for you in answer. And because God is spirit, he speaks spiritually. Because he's a spirit. He's a spirit. He speaks the language of the spirit. The language of the spirit is revelation. So when you too are his child, you will be alive in the spirit. You will be attuned to him. You will not struggle with obedience. And your miracle will come. And let me tell you, God does not see things as man sees it. You want a child. You are asking for the fruit of the womb. God may say, dance seven days. You say, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Somebody, you know, somebody who does not have a husband or a wife. You now ask God, Father, I need a baby. You say, ah, uh, uh, why is he asking? Has he, has he gotten married? Sir, anybody can ask for whatever he needs. God knows how to sort it out. He knows that a woman cannot get pregnant by herself on her own. Am I talking to you? And God said, dance. And she starts dancing. And the brother who is looking for a dancer will see and say, wow. Wow. Look at those dancing steps. Sir. And he will say, definitely this is my wife. But if Sister Regina stands in church as what we call monumental rigidity, you know statue, you know statue. <laughs> I know statue. See, somebody is praying for fruit of the womb. Twenty-five years, he has not received. Which kind of dancing? Look at all of them; they don't know what they are doing. Me, I will not dance. Though. And the brother will pass her by. Somebody, you will not miss it in the mighty name of Jesus. My sheep never struggles with obedience. They will be willingly. The next one. This sheep follows the master's footsteps. He imitates Jesus. Exactly like him. That is what the sheep does. All these things are inside the book of John chapter number 10 verse 27 and 28. It follows the master's footsteps and let us take the last one. The second to the last. He gains Satan alive. Eternal life. And the description of this person. You see, this eternal life, many people don't know that it is what is called, what I decide to call a higher life. He is here on this world. But he is operating at a higher level than the normal human being. Imagine you pray for a car and you are going for a program. The Lord said, put on white dress. And you put on the white dress and you came back home that day with the car. Economically, it does not make sense. White clothes don't buy cars. But in the spirit realm, it does. Because it is obedience. You are seeking for a marriage partner. And God said, dance. And you get to church that morning, start dancing. And that person comes. You are seeking money. Capital for business. The little 2,000 naira you keep. God said, take it, go and sow it to a social person. That person may even be an unbeliever. <laughs> you will have easily obeyed if they say go and give pastor or give one body in this church it might be an unbeliever and you go and give the person and you will be surprised God may not even come that same day but the day God chooses to come he will come with that miracle 
the provision that you cannot even pray for. That is so large you can't imagine yourself owning it. When you are the sheep that Jesus is talking about, you will obey joyfully. Because of all these things, you live a kind of life that people cannot explain. Nicodemus came to Jesus Christ by night in the book of John chapter number 3. And Jesus began to tell him that you must be born again. He asked questions. Jesus answered him. Jesus now described somebody who is born again. He said the wind blow it. And you don't know where the wind is coming from or where it is going. John 3 verse 8. See the wind blow it where it listed. And thou hearest the sound thereof but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. This is the power in being born again. He said, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. It means that the person who is born of the Spirit, you can't limit it. You can't limit him. That person that is born of the Spirit is not predictable. He may be poor in the morning. And that same evening, he's talking about buying a mansion and he has the money already. You can see him sick now. In that same evening, that man is already healed, playing football. You can't predict him. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. This person, the sheep, is totally sold out to Jesus. He's totally sold out. Does not have any other plan other than Jesus. Say next tomorrow, I am going to a social place. <laughs> he doesn't have that plan. He doesn't. He asked Jesus, what do you want me to do now? Totally sold out. They invite him to a party. He's so excited about the party. But he will wait on God. Should I go? Say, why is he asking that question? He's not, he's not his next door neighbor. He, his master may not allow him to go. Totally sold out. He does not seek his own benefit alone. He seeks the benefit of his Lord and Master. Would Jesus be happy with me if I did this? That person makes heaven. That is the last one. He goes home. Because that is the home. Where his master is waiting for him. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Brethren, we are going to continue from there next week. Let's bow, our, let's bow down our heads. Talk to God this morning. The most essential ingredient of being my sheep is hearing the master. Father, give me the grace to hear you clearly from today in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Father, give me that grace to hear you tell you from today. Open my ears to receive your word from today. To receive instructions from you. Father, open my ears in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Without hearing him, my brother, my sister, that person is empty. It is an empty life. Father, circumcise my spirit. Let my spirit man come alive this morning. 
to receive from you in the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, let my spirit man come alive in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. My brother, my sister, if you are here, you have not given your life to Christ. You have not started the first step of this journey. You need to raise your hand wherever you are. Let everybody, let every head be bowed. All eyes closed. Raise your hands wherever you are. Let us agree together before him this morning. Give your life to him. Are you here? You want to give your life to Jesus? Just raise that hand, your right hand up. Let us pray together this morning. Go on your knee where you are. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Go on your knee. God bless you. You want to give your life to him. Go on your knee. Go on your knee. God bless you. Please, you have raised up your hand. Go on your knee. I am kneeling here because of you too. Go down on your knee. God bless you. Talk to him this morning. Say, Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. And I know you died for me on the cross of Calvary. That blood that you shed for me, use it to cleanse me this morning. Come into my life. Be my Lord and personal Savior. By your grace and mercy. My brother, my sister, you are there. You are ashamed of owning up for Jesus. You are ashamed of raising up your hand. If you are ashamed of Jesus today, do you know that he said he will be ashamed of you also before his father? Give your life to him now. Sister, don't postpone your day of salvation. Those of us that are praying, tell him, Lord Jesus, come into my life now. Be my Lord and personal Savior. By your grace and mercy, I will not return to sin anymore. You can mention those sins, anyone you can remember, even if it is one or two. Just mention it. Say, forgive me, have mercy on me. Write my name in the book of life. I renounce this morning every covenant I might have had with the devil and with the world. I will not return to sin anymore. Amen. Father, we bless your name. Lord, I thank you for these ones and for the joy that is in heaven over them. And as many that are also dedicating, dedicating their life to you this morning, Father, accept every one of us unto yourself. Father, give us your Holy Spirit this morning. Circumcise our hearts to receive you and open up our ears so that we can hear you. Father, we bless your name. Continue to talk to us, Daddy. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name.